Hi everyone and welcome to the first video for the Introduction to Data course. This week we are going to be talking about what is data and the difference between data and information. Data is facts and values. Data is technically anything that we can collect. So if we, for example, have some basic information such as name and address, that would be considered data, uh, miles per gallon in your car and how long you've had since your last oil change, data, how many video games you have and what the stats on your main characters are, data. All of those pieces of information is considered data and it's things that we can collect and then hopefully do something useful with. Information is what we're actually getting out of the data. So let's say, for example, my data is that the sky is blue. I have collected this data by going outside, looking up at the sky and deciding it's blue. The information that I get from this data is that blue skies likely indicate clear weather and unlikely to rain unless you live in New England, of course. But the difference is data just is a piece of fact, whereas information is something that we could infer or get out of the data. We could also say the data could be the temperature outside. So the temperature could be 30 degrees, 40 degrees, 90 degrees. Um, we could have data collected in Celsius. It could be 3C or 20C. The information that we get from this data is maybe, is today a good day to wear a sweater or a t-shirt? Or we could make some predictions if we have enough data to be able to say, this is potentially abnormal weather or the weather happens to be warm and we weren't expecting it to be warm, things like that. Data tends to be unorganized, doesn't usually have context. Data can be quantitative or qualitative. Now, when I say quantitative or qualitative, what I mean is, we can have data that we're saving as, for example, numbers. That would be quantitative data. So if I asked you to rate your last meal on a scale of 1 to 10, or if I asked you to, when you're at the doctor's office and they ask you to rate your pain on a scale of 1 to 10, like that kind of thing would be quantitative data. Qualitative data is if I asked you how you feel today, or what your thoughts were about your last meal. What did you enjoy about your last meal? And then you may give me sentences or paragraphs or descriptive words about what's actually happening. So some examples of data that we may end up collecting might be the number of people that are coming to a website. That's actually a very common metric for how popular a site is. Customer survey responses or product prices are other really common pieces of data. A lot of places have started asking every customer to rate the service, whether you are buying a car or buying an item from an online store. They will say, you know, what did you think about the item? What did you think about your service? Information is what we're getting out of that data. So information tends to be organized and tends to have a little bit more context. Now, context is more like, how can we make sense of this? If I just said, for example, four, that's probably not the most useful thing to you. If, however, I said, on a scale of one to 10, what did you think about the last textbook that you've read? And then I collected 10 responses so that I could look at the average. That might have a little bit more context to it. Information can also be used to help make decisions. Let's say, for example, we did rate textbooks. Let's pretend for a moment we all love reading textbooks. So we're going to give a lot of our textbooks um, sevens, eights, and nines on the scale. 
And then if we have a textbook and it only writes, for example, a three, maybe we know that that's not a good textbook to use going forward. So we can help make that decision based off of looking at the other ratings for the textbooks that we're looking at. Now, some other examples. If we look back at website metrics, how many people are going to this website? If the website metrics change, more people are going, fewer people are going, that may give us some indications as to what's going on in our site. Have there been any updates? Is there a new advertising campaign that's potentially popular? Um, what has changed since the last time we took this if there is a big change in our traffic? Another example is uh, customer sentiment. So that's the survey results. If you went and bought a book and they asked you to rate your book buying experience on a scale of one to 10, and they noticed that the customer ratings were changing either way, either up or down the scale, then we would be able to look back and say, you know, hey, what's going on? Why are these ratings changing? What have we done differently? And so we might be able to make our businesses more profitable based off of the information that we're getting from all of this data that we've collected. Now, data and information help us make choices. Some really common pieces of information that you probably get in your everyday life. When you're shopping in a grocery store, you probably see prices, the data. That can help you figure out if you're gonna be going over budget. Most people, most of us have some variety of budget for basically everything that we do. So we probably have a grocery budget, we probably have a utilities budget, we may have a rent or mortgage budget. And being able to see the prices of the different things that we're buying will help us figure that out. Now, one of the important things that I would like to note here, which is being illustrated by the picture that I've included, is Data can also be misleading. Data and information are important, but if you don't have the correct context, that doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to be able to get anything valuable out of it. So if I, for example, told you that there was a male born in 1948, raised in the UK, married twice, lives in a castle, and was wealthy and famous, that is a whole bunch of data, but that doesn't necessarily tell us who I'm talking about. And you can see by this example, I could reasonably be talking about Prince Charles or King Charles now, or Ozzy Osbourne. Now, um, for those of you that may or may not know, this is not the same person. Um, and you would probably want to make sure that you don't accidentally mistake one for the other. If, especially if you're going to be going to the UK. So it's important to think about the context that we have all of this information in. Now, different jobs will use data and information in different ways. All jobs will use data to some extent and try to extrapolate some information from the data. However, different jobs, different companies, different people will use that to different extents. For example, a sales department might see sales numbers go up or down. That will help them decide what might be happening on their next ad campaign or if the ad campaign is going well or if they need to make some changes to it. You know, there's a lot of cases where ad campaigns might end up making positive or negative changes where a lot of people are maybe going to the site and not buying anything or they've stopped going to the site. You know, for example, um, if a company happens to use nothing but pop-up ads, most people get really annoyed by pop-up ads and some people will stop going to the site or get a really negative impression or negative feeling of sites that use pop-up ads. And that might mean that they'll see web traffic go down. Payroll might look at information and data and see how much money is coming in versus going out. And then they will share that data and information with management so that they can do things like make choices about how many more people are being hired, what projects are being worked on, or potentially what needs to happen with budgets. If you've ever worked in a kitchen or a restaurant, 
you know that you are probably relatively close to the line for budgets. And so most kitchens and restaurants are going to pay very close attention to food waste. And then they're going to change the way that they do ordering and prep to make sure that they don't have as much food waste. That's why you'll sometimes see restaurants have specials on certain days because that was the extra things that weren't used the previous day. And most restaurants are not making enough money to be able to afford just throwing food away or giving food away. Um, investors might look at market trends. Um, if anybody remembers the stock, I'm, ju I'm just going to call it stock nonsense, but if you would like to call it stonks, that's fine fine too, I suppose. Um, but you may end up have seen the stock things that happened um, where there was GameStop stock selling for, you know, $300, $400 a share when it was starting at like $5. And so investors might have seen some of those trends or be able to predict what was happening based off of the previous data that they had or seeing some of the trends based off of the data that they were collecting. Or in some cases, they wouldn't have been able to predict it based off of stock data. They would have had to go to other places on the internet. Um, some other examples. Businesses might track money through sales. So you might end up seeing things like demand for electric cars going up. And so we might end up seeing more electric car chargers. Uh, marketing might track views on ads. So they might end up seeing that they are getting boosts to the website traffic or sales based off of, um, you know, YouTube influencers or podcasts getting discount coupons. They might see that go up. Payroll might be tracking money. Um, and they might be looking at things like how much they can spend on R&D or research and development. Management will sometimes track productivity. So um, now I will have a little side note here. Management tracking productivity and how much things are actually being reasonably produced are not always the same. Um, the easiest way that I can explain that is if you are a programmer, it's kind of like trying to say, I was super productive programming today because I made 100 lines of code. That's not the most reasonable metric because your code could be junk and you could produce 100 lines of code and the next day get rid of 1,000 lines of code and that would actually be considered a really productive week because you were able to clean up your code base. Um, but management will sometimes track productivity. Um, I guess a more normal people example for that might be some of the management companies have actually started installing tracking software on computers uh, during the pandemic. And they were paying attention to things like how many key clicks were happening or how often the mouse was moving and things like that. Um, and I think that we can all definitively agree that the number of key clicks and mouse movements are not necessarily correlated to how productive you are in a day. Now, all of that data that's being collected will get filtered through the company and start going up through the different chains of management. And then finally, the C-suite people in the company, so, um, you know, like CEO, CFO, CISO, things like that, they will make some choices about directions the company could go into. Do we want to do more or less electric car production? Do we want to do more or less electric car charger production? Do we want to do uh, more or less or something different? Maybe we've decided that electric cars are not the future and instead we'd like to have cars that I don't know, run on grass and sticks. And so they've decided that that's where their next, you know, R&D budget is going to go. So those are the types of things that a company might do with the data to be able to make some decisions about it. Now, another example, we're going to look at books and libraries. So Libraries, which if you don't know, are an amazing resource in your community. I highly recommend you go. Librarians are also awesome. I have never met a librarian that wasn't awesome. 
libraries will track books that are going in and out. They will track the number of people going in and out. They will track things like book titles, authors, ISBNs, and then they can make some purchasing decisions based off of that. They can also do things like track events so they can see maybe which events are popular, which events are less popular, and who's coming to these events. So, you know, for example, a library might be able to see that a lot of people in the community love fantasy books or sci-fi books or self-help books or biographies. And then they would be able to make more purchases based off of what people in the community are enjoying in the hopes that more people in the community will come use the library. They can also track some data about what is likely to be popular, but also what times are likely to be popular. When are people most likely to go to the library? Is it 9 in the morning, 6 p.m. at night, Saturdays? You know, when is popular times so they can have people there and make sure the library is open at times that people want it. And so those are some examples of the types of data that we may end up collecting and the information that we can then get from that data that we've collected. I hope that made sense and if you have any questions or concerns please feel free to reach out. I hope you all are having a lovely day and I hope you have a lovely day tomorrow as well.